Hi everyone, welcome back to the Getabry channel. So today we're going to look at oak footer, something that I've wanted to have in our brewery for a very, very long time. Something that I'm really, really interested in. You're going to say, what is it? It's an oak vat and, you know, what's a footer? It sounds like food with an ER at the end of it. It's, you know, it's not a footer in that sense. It's a large oak foudre. My pronunciation of that isn't going to be very good at all, but um, it's something we've wanted to get involved in. So like we would like to cover a topic of this and cover it over multiple different videos and feature different parts of it. So one thing I wanted to share with you was my experience in sourcing them. So we dealt with a French um, cooperage uh, on these particular footers that are here. And these are like, they're second hand, they're ex wine, but we've had them, had some changes made to suit our needs. So whenever you go to look for an oak footer, I guess the critical thing is to do some research on what they've been used for previously. Like we all have the opportunity to go and buy these brand new, but we maybe don't all have the, the ability to buy them brand new and spec them out. So you can, source them second hand you can have the cooperage mech adjustments for example on these um, footers what we got them to do was to put some cooling plates inside which would allow us obviously to cool the beer whenever it's inside the, the footer but also equally to put on some solenoids that we could rig up and do heating and cooling so we can regulate the temperature so we were wanting to, to make everything that little bit more precise so when it came to sourcing these it, i found there was a lack of knowledge locally and um, perhaps you know we approach some brewers that are doing this like there's some impeccable examples of people using footers like Tom and Landon Labour um, in Galway in the south of Ireland the north of Ireland we're not sure that we have anyone doing oak footers and, and something that we really wanted to get involved in here within the Irish craft beer scene so there's lots of people starting to do mixed fermentation beers. There's lots of people starting to experiment with with um, with wood and barrels, but footers was something that I was passionate about. I was, I was excited. I was looking online, I was reading blogs, I was looking to anywhere to get more information. I, I picked up the wood and beer book off Amazon and, and I was digesting it to try and learn what, what do I do, what, what do I look for. So when I was reaching out to my distribution partners that we supply ingredients for, I'm asking them, can, can you help me with information on, on what to do with this? So we took what information we could, we read books, we read blogs, we rang friends, you know, and did what we could. So for, for me to give you some tips when sourcing an oak footer, you want to know the background of the, the oak. You want to know what was in it. Was it a spirit? Um, like there's lots of weird and wonderful things out there now you can get you know, soy sauce barrels, you can get hot sauce barrels, tequila, rum, whiskey, bourbon. These particular ones are wine. And we knew obviously that it came from a great wine region, cognac region. And um, like the quality of the oak is something that needs to be taken into consideration as well. So you need information from the cooperage as to, you know, the thickness of the staves. Um, the char that was inside it, the you know even the way that you know the the staves are shaped internally can affect the flavors. The depth of the char can create different reactions and create different flavor profiles. And there's a lot of complexities in the science there that would create very different outcomes for your beer. The things that you might want to consider adding, like obviously you may want to do primary fermentation in them, so you're going to want a hole for a bubbler airlock. If you're going to be you know, adding fruit and grapes, leaves or grape skins. You may want a manway door to enable easy cleaning. For example, we've put the cooling plates inside um, before they arrived here. Uh, sample ports, butterfly valves. You could even go as far as putting stainless steel manholes on top and stainless steel manholes on bottom. What way that you're going to, to fit them in the brewery? Where are you going to store them? Like there's endless amount of things that you need to take into consideration before you go ordering yourself a footer. But the key thing that I have learned from this experience has been to learn about what has been in the oak footers, you know, um, what type of wine, what char, 
um, how have they been handled from the, they've been emptied. So sometimes what the cooperage may do is they may, you know, burn some sulfur inside them and then close off with a paper cup or a bung and then wrap it with cling film and then transport them that way. Others may, you know, transport them with nothing, then you need to be wary of making them clean whenever they arrive. And others would transport, they could come with spirits still in it, they could come with wine still in it. So visual inspection upon arrival is critically important. So what you're going to want to do when it arrives is obviously, you know, just check for bulges, for breakages, for visual damage, you know, run your hand over it, check for gaps. So what we had found with these particular footers was that they had dried slightly in transit and um, given the time of the year that we had moved them. So the hoops had moved and if we can just point your attention, there's little nails here, little holders that where this, the, the hoops, you know, have been taken to and you can appoint a point to make sure that there isn't holes all over the place where these have been moved multiple times. So you want to make sure that the the hoops are, are knocked back into place. We did this, like you, you can get cooperage tools to do this, but basically what we did was we got a, you know, a metal plate and a rubber mallet and hammered them back into place, rubbed up the, the wood a little bit to ensure that we'd moved. You could see that there was a little bit of, um, you know, like almost corroded dust or like a little bit of dirt that had obviously moved when this had moved in behind just to bring them up clean to make them look nice again. Take your bung out, have a look inside. You know, you're going to want to see if it's X wine, it could be that there's wine stone in there and you want to have that removed. And there's multiple ways of doing that. And, you know, you'll read in books and blogs that um, people develop their own way of steam cleaning these. People develop a way of, you know, maybe putting chains or like I've, I've, I've heard of people putting nuts and bolts and washers in and then rolling them down a grass hill to get them to create a friction which takes the, the wine stone off it. So the visual inspection is critically important. And then you need to manage the, the footer. So they're going to need rehydrated and they're going to need left with either a storage solution or depending on how you find them, they may need a cleaning solution added. So like we're going to try and share information. We're going to put some uh, information in below on what we have done with these. So the footers have only arrived into the brewery. We haven't had the opportunity to, to fill them with beer. We've carried out an initial inspection. We've, we've worked with um, an idea and what we want to put in each one of them and age them over a few years. But we've just put a storage solution into them, so a sodium metal bisulfate um, solution, and I can put the ratio down below. And we filled it with hot water and checked the temperature to make sure that we were getting that temperature, not just from the inside, but to the outside. So we wanted to make sure we were hitting over 60 degrees. We filled it in three thirds. So first third, second third, and then right to the top. And again, a, a very you know unusual sort of learning process for me because I, I you know don't, don't know who to reach out to for you know detailed information in this other than what we've done so far. So it has been a steep learning curve, but it's something that if you're really interested in it, you know you don't mind spending extra time filling these things with you know storage solution. You don't mind inspecting them and paying attention to what's going on. So couple of pointers that I picked up from chatting to the cooper was make sure that your hips are all in line so and make sure that your um, you know where the hips are connected here that they haven't been replaced and maybe set offline that would show that there's been some sort of you know negative maintenance carried out whenever they're rehydrated you want to visually check for leaks to make sure that there's nothing coming out of the you know the the seams or the gaps between the staves and just generally looking for, you know, is this nicely sealed and painted at the edges, you know, and you can see here there's a sample tap. Initially, I thought, why is there not a, you know, a turn, a turn screw here? And it's most likely just to prevent people that, you know, maybe enter the brewery and don't know that uh, there's aged beer in it and turn it on and cause an issue and walk away. So it just means that we use a little set of grips to open them. Sample, we, we tested the manway to make sure it opened in and out, tested the butterfly valves, we carried out a good deep clean of the stainless steel, washed all of this down and just made sure that visually it looked appealing from the outside. And then the environment from which we're storing these in, obviously it's within 
a brewery um, location, so we want to make sure that it's a sealed environment, that anything in the air isn't going to get in and spoil that. So when it comes to storage solutions for the footers, it's going to be you know, a potassium metal bisulfate, and perhaps a little bit of citric acid, or you're going to need to add that at a later date to change the pH. You know, if you're trying to take the, you know, say you've, you've identified an issue with the barrel and you need to do a, you know, a deep clean on it. You know, my understanding of it is that sodium percarbonate would be a good chemical to use, but really you, you're not wanting to use chemicals on these. It's, it's traditional, it's heritage, it's old school techniques. So rinse, repeat rinse, rinse, rinse more, use water, use temperature as your friend in relation to this. And one point that I want to point out is that whenever we had identified this particular footer and it arrived, you can see here, you know, that there is a, you know, and it, there's an imperfection as such, there's a crack in the top of it, but the crack only permeates down a few millimeters. And if you take that this is a five centimeter stave, for me, that isn't an issue at all. So all we did was literally give that a little rub uh, and a clean and be sure that you know the bung is doing its job before we put the storage solution inside it. So look, visual, um, do, do you, visual checks, doing your background check before the beer, no, sorry, so visual checks are important, um, but little imperfections aren't the end of the world if you can identify that the beer is still safe inside. So make sure everything's checked visually upon arrival make sure that you identify any issues and work around them. You know, like if you have the luxury of buying brand new, you buy second hand. These aren't cheap, whether they're brand new or second hand, but some of them could be decades old. Some of them could be, you know, 100 years old. You, you really want to treat them with care and um, learn about their background and how you can get the most out of them in your brain project. For us, this is a, a, a fermentation project. What we're wanting to do is push the boundaries of fermentation. We want to make beers that will create complexity over several years. So we could make a spontaneous beer, uh, spontaneously fermented, inoculating using wild microflora and bugs that are in the air with a cool ship, place it into the footer and allow that to develop over a three year period. Um, we're going to brew saisons, we're going to brew red flanders, we're going to really just um, make beers that we're passionate about and make beers that, you know, that excite us. And you can only create beers in footers with that level of complexity with patience and time. So keep patience and time at the forefront of that if you're considering getting involved in this. So we want to take a look at the footer that we have here. This is a very old footer, but it is a limousine oak footer. It's a very rare type of oak from the limousine forest in France. It has, you can see the old wooden manway door and it's just got, like it, it's got beautiful character. But um, whenever you see something like this, it's, <laughs> you know, our, our opinion on this initially when we had seen it was we were very unsure about whether we had received something that we could make work. But whenever you look into, you know, the inside of it and you do the testing on it and you check the, you know, for the, just the visual aesthetics of it, whether it's got leaks, whether it's got ability for beer to be, you know, protected, and you know you, you can age the beer to get the complexity and get the flavours out of the oak. Um, for us here, we're wanting to experiment with lots of different types of oak over time to learn, but we have carried out research in relation to the limousine forest oak. And we have carried out research into the types of wine and the char that was in the footers that we have bought. And we believe that we can pair beers that will create a depth of complexity that will excite the palate. So this is a long running project that's going to take several years to come to fruition. And we may use like a Solero effect where we would draw some of the volume of the aged beer off and blend it with new beer and we'd blend that at different percentages and then we'll refill the footers and allow time to develop. So there's lots of factors for us and we really love to talk more about this. And if you have any tips, if you have any experience about oak footers, you know, like comment below, interact with us, let us know your tips and tricks, let us know what you like about this. Um, 
Like I'm not affiliated with these guys in this book at all, but I've found this book an excellent knowledge resource. It's Wood and Beer, a Brewer's Guide, written by Dick Cantle and Peter Burkhardt. Whether I pronounce those names correct or not, I don't know. I just want you know to share our experience with Oak Fitters. We're passionate about the type of beers and try and teach you a little bit of you know what we encountered working through this process. So that's an introduction to Oak Fitters. We're going to do a series of videos on this and we're going to discuss our brewery project and the driven fermentation project as we start to progress this ourselves and share our experiences with you and we hope that you find this useful and we'd love to hear from you if you've anything to add in relation to Oak Footers and your experience with them. So thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy brewing.